Hello and welcome to The Pyramid Show. Uh, the Pyramid Show is a show designed to educate you on all the technicalities and legalities on the acquisition and construction of your property. To be, uh, be it a house, office, store, land, etc. In Ghana, most people perform their own building supervision out of the fear of you know, escaping the professional fee. And uh, the cost that come with it, because these professionals, we believe, uh, take quite a number, uh, take quite you know, a huge fee when they are doing the supervision for you. So this show brings you the experts, the moguls, and the captains of the construction industry to educate us on the standards and the right practices to adhere to on the many building construction challenges we encounter due to poor construction standards and defects on our buildings like dampness, leakages, cracks, etc. On this show, The Pyramid, you will find the solutions to important construction topics like mortgages, home insurance, safety and well-being of occupants, rent, building drawings and designs. Again, we shall be talking about permit and documentations and you wouldn't want to miss a single episode of The Pyramid Show. Now, today, coming up, the lineup is this. We will be having a wonderful discussion with one giant in the real estate industry. I tell you, this man has had many years, over a decade experience as a real estate developer. He is currently the president for the Airport City Association and again, a council member for the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. He's also um, the owner and director of the Lakeside Estate that we know uh, to be in Accra. So this and many more will be coming your way you stick and stay with us. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back. My name is Emmanuel Owusu Ansa. I'm your host for the show. Today, my guest in the studio, uh, like I mentioned earlier, he's had a uh, great experience with the real estate, you know, uh, Agenda Development in Ghana. He's a renowned person in the industry and a giant as well. Currently, he is the president for the Airport City Association here in Accra and again, the owner and director of the Lakeside Estate, a council member for Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, and finally, the executive director in other words, the owner for Silver Star Tower that is standing at Opebia Jan Shimosufa's call. Uh, his name is none other than Mr. Salama Kweku Kamoni, and he prefers when I call him KK. KK, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's uh, nice to be here. It's always nice to have that time with you. Uh, going straight to our question, our first question. We are looking at real estate in the past, the now, in the future. And real estate in uh, modern society it's one important venture because um, the population keeps swelling. Most people, everybody wants a place to, you know, shelter, stay. And that calls for the need for investors, people like you, for what you do. That is the construction of homes. And I do also understand that real estate, as most of us perceive or understood, uh, is not just about residential. We have the commercial aspect of real estate and we have the industrial aspect of real estate. You would want to throw more light on real estate and these categories before we go on to other questions. Yes, I'll be very happy to talk about the three different types of real estate. As you said, there was the residential, which is always very popular, but then there's also the commercial and the industrial. And for me, I have been doing this in Ghana since, 20, uh, since 1998. So now I'm celebrating my 25 years. 25 years. Yes. But yes. Kweku, that part, I mean, yes. Kweku and Ghanaians are finding it difficult to understand. Kweku. Okay, you see, when you are born in Ghana <laughs> on a Wednesday, always people ask me, what does Kweku mean? We all know that it's born on Wednesday. Okay. Maybe a little bit of history. My, grand, my uh, grandfather, he didn't come to Ghana. He came to Gold Coast in 1912. <laughs> so last year, we were celebrating our... Your, your grandparents came to Gold Coast. They didn't yes. come to Ghana. Correct. If you know your history books, then you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, so that explains the name Kweku. Yes. A typical Ghanaian. Right. We shouldn't yes. make any mistake about it. Yes, don't let my face confuse No, no, not at all. <laughs> and I always tell people I'm a Fanti man. So yeah. when there's the census, they ask me which tribe, I say Fanti. You're a Fanti? Yes. Then can we add a boat to your name? You can add a boat to your name. 
<laughs> okay. So henceforth, we are adding to your name. Okay. So now my next question is the real estate. Like you explained, you've been in Ghana for, you know, <clears throat> you were virtually born here, raised here. You saw the housing situation, the deficit, though the government is trying to bridge the gap, but yet, you know, the lapse is in there. What motivated you? What was the drive going into real estate? Uh, yes. Um, I think when we started thinking about real estate, I have to go a little bit, uh, a bit back to 1974. Japan Motors acquired a piece of land uh, north of Accra. Uh, it was known as Japan Motors Farms, which is agri-cattle. And then uh, at that time, uh, we decided to convert it from agriculture to real estate around the 2000. And our first MD, uh, God bless him, was uh, Dr. Kwame Jemfi. And we decided at that point in time, there was the Regiomanagri, there was the Manets, that we also want to go real estate, but we want to go at the lower, uh, at the lower income level. And that's when we started in the year 2000. So it, it took us about two years to start, but we, we built and sold our first 10 houses, I remember, in uh, 2000. And they were going as low as ten thousand dollars. Wait, so the first the first project you were successful with ten houses. I wouldn't say successful because it took us six months before we were able to sell. Because you know, any person who wants to go into real estate, you need reputation because mm. there is a lot of um, uh, people who promise and cannot deliver. So this is another aspect of real estate that you need credibility. Credibility. Yes. Now, talking about the early challenges you face when you commence that you are talking about credibility, would you want to tell us some of the challenges, you know, the early stages of Lakeside, the early phase of Lakeside you encountered trying to, you know, go into real estate as of today, as of now? Uh, congratulations. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the record that um, your real estate, Lakeside, has the biggest, you know, development at one area, and that is not an easy feat to achieve, more especially with the uh, drainage construction and also the well laid road asphalted. And I, I think it, this, this, this is good news for you. Uh, yes, thank you very much for your kind words. Yes, uh, Lakeside Estate has grown over the last 23 years. When we started like any real estate company or any company, I always tell people, start small. Start with two houses, three houses, and build your reputation. I remember uh, when we started, people used to call our houses boys' quarters. Houses. You call them boys' quarters? <laughs> yes, uh, but you know, 23 years ago, Ghana had changed a lot. If you remember the type of construction, we had laterite roads, we have earth drains, but now, as you say, Lakeside Estate is something on a very much different scale. So, uh, yes, so, uh, and the thing about real estate, a lot of developers, they forget to invest in the infrastructure. And this is one of the things we decided to do at Lakeside Estate, that we are not going to wait for the municipal assembly, mm -hmm. we're not going to wait for government, we will do our laterite road, then we did, uh, um, we did the gutters with block work, now we do them all in concrete. Uh, we bring in our own electricity, our own transformers, so this becomes a big cost. Uh, right now at Lakeside Estate and most, uh, most real estate companies, the cost of infrastructure is between $15,000 to $25,000. Wow. And this one, you haven't done even your fence wall and your septic tank, let alone. So yes, real estate uh, is expensive, but it's real and it's good. It's really good. And it's really good. Okay, so on your screens, you see the current uh, housing done by Real uh, Lakeside Estate at uh, Asaliboche. Uh, actually, at Adenta. Adenta. Uh, Adenta, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. But then uh, you've mentioned some few challenges and also giving us the motivation to venture into real estate. But um, with the acquisition of land, I mean, it's so vast. I've seen your property, and uh, I really can tell you, without the bad eye, I mean to say the helicopter, there's no way you're going to see the land, the breadth of your, you know, your land. How was that possible? Knowing the story of how, you know, brutal, uh, risky, if I'm allowed to use the word, to acquire land in Ghana. How yes. did you do that? With a lot of wahala. With a lot of wahala. <laughs> you know, and I mean, it's always difficult. Uh, having land is difficult. Buying land is difficult. Even keeping land is difficult. So as I said, uh, we acquired the land in 1974 as agri-cattle. Mm -hmm. And later on, 
with the consent of our allodial owners, I think in 1995, we changed it from agriculture to real estate. But even in spite of these things, uh, we, I can later on share stories with land guards and things like that. Uh, thank God we, we have surpassed the land guard <laughs> problems about 10, 15 years ago. Okay, now you mentioned land guards. Yes. You know, uh, Mr. Richard Abbey, yes. one of your architects. Yes, yes, yes. He's also my boss. Oh, So, I mean, he shared with me the story I told him you have for the show today. And he told me an experience, you know, uh, yourself, him, and other, you know, your entourage, you experienced this langa thing on your land. And they were running away. Correct. But you were still, you were calm. I'm told you didn't, when, when the, uh, the bullets were flying, you were just calm and you actually approached them. What was the story? Uh, well, is it because you are that of a... that courageous back But I that's what Abe is saying. Abe is yes. literally saying that they ran away, but you actually confronted them. Uh, yes. Uh, this is, I think, around 2007, 2008, where we really have started. And the land guards uh, and the people who were behind them, they, they were trying to scare us off. Now, the good thing uh, is that I'm an ex-soldier. I'm a master bombardier. So master I, bombardier. <laughs> so I have been trained in the army. When a bullet is coming through you, you don't run away. You go towards the bullet. So you actually, you know, practice anyway, that. Anyway, we, we, we ducked, we ducked. You have to, I mean, there's a strategy of uh, fighting uh, the land guards. So it was difficult times. It was not easy. Mm. It was risky. I think he told you the story, I think two cars were burnt and one of them was his car. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm sure all our GRADA members, they, we all have these types of stories. Okay. And uh, we need, uh, we are happy with the IGP uh, and the current uh, uh, political policies trying to, uh, they have declared them illegal and they are trying to prosecute them. It, it hasn't been 100% successful, but we are moving in the right direction. Yes. And this is not only to, uh, to this. I know at Airport West residential area, uh, at one point in time, uh, you know, I was doing a project there, also a land guards game, and also in Tama land guards game. So any place, usually in Ghana or a lot of places, you get uh, land guards or guru boys or people who are trying to extract money from mm, you. Mm. Okay, so you heard it from the man, uh, the giant. He wants us to call him Ebo or Kweku. And Kweku, Kweku, Keke. Keke, Keke. <laughs> So KK is his name, Kweku Kamoni, and like he shared his story, it means if you want to go into real estate, you need to have a bit of that military experience so that, you know, you don't run away from the bullet, but you rather have, you know, some nice approach to the bullet. He's not saying go and die, but you need to have a bit of experience. Literally, he's talking about being brave once you want to venture into real estate because the Wahala will be there to face you. You just have to be brave. Now, today, unfortunately, we will not be bringing you the social media segment, but then you are also allowed the phone lines will be activated. You can call into the studio and also be part of the conversation. Okay, so we'll be taking a break here. The show returns shortly. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the industrial, the commercial, and the residential real estate venture. Welcome back from the break. It's been an exciting discussion so far here with KK, the man known as Kweku Kamoni. And uh, KK, I understand you're an expert when it comes to affordable housing. I, I try to be. You try to be? Yes. You try to be? I try to be. But what's the done, reality? Well, we have done a couple Your houses, of are they cheaper? Uh, no, at Lakeside Estate, through uh, Star Property Management, we did an experimental uh, flats. Okay. We did actually three of them. And uh, we, we have also, I think we have found a solution to affordable. Oh, KK, okay, okay, you found. It's not like yes. you're actually rolling it out. Yes, yes, we have found it. And uh, these things we are sharing with uh, other greater members and Lakeside Estate. And I think this year you can see maybe Lakeside Estate developing their own prototypes as well. Okay, we can't wait for that because now, um, you know, in a part of the world, especially here in Ghana, um, it's seen as... Um, um, as, as, a, as a prestige, it goes beyond status to have a home. So it's the determination of every individual to own a home. But the truth is, the cost that comes with it, as to whether you choose to construct it on your own or to get the professionals, and or probably get to buy it from a real estate developer, the prices, I mean, 
uh, it just kills the hopes of many people. And I believe it's about time either the government or the private uh, you know, investors, you look at the cost involved. That's why I'm asking this question. And again, that brings me to uh, this question. That is to say, you go elsewhere, probably in the America, in the Europe, where they also go about constructing you know, large units of building and they have uh, a lot of flats within there. Typically here in Ghana, you can make an example of the Kanda flat. You can go to Sakumono, you see those flats there. It makes it easy, it makes it very, very affordable. But uh, in present days, everybody wants what the lemma would say, a self-compound, and I believe that is very costly. And even with the real estate developers, most of you, we don't see you do more of these, uh, you know, flat units, but just uh, these detached homes, and I think it's expensive. Why are you not looking at uh, attached homes? I think that's a very excellent question. And it has to do with our culture. As you said, it's a spread siege. To, to live in a large, uh, big home. But the problem is we cannot afford it. So that's why the real estate, uh, a lot of real estate companies, they go into the middle end and the high end. But we do have uh, members other than Lakeside Estate. We have uh, a Dome City Estate. We have Blue Rose who also do uh, uh, affordable. Now, I need to define what is affordable housing because this is also a big debate. There are different definitions, but I'll go with the definition which we a greater look at that you need to say what is a house and what is affordable. So a house is a self-contained unit which must have at least one bedroom. It has a living area, it has a kitchen. Now the kitchen could be open. It must have its own washroom and it must have its own utilities. So that becomes a house. And it must be 45 square meters or more. Then uh, affordable is anything between 25,000 US dollars or the CD equivalent of 25,000 to uh, 65,000. And our members do produce these things. 25,000 dollars. Yes. Dollars. dollars. 25,000 dollars is around uh, 300,000 uh, CDs. Uh, there is a real price to pay, and this is based on the 45. Now, technically, you can build a room and call it a house, but that's not the house. So we, uh, that's why I needed to define the house before I can tell you what is affordable. Okay. Uh, and uh, culturally, uh, we have realized, even though the house is defined as one bedroom, uh, uh, most real estate companies would like to do two bedroom or more because of our culture. Yeah. Now, historically, I don't know whether you travel in the north or, or not, you see, traditionally, there'll be like one hut, two hut. Then as the family grows, you add more huts. But when you are in a high rise, which is the most efficient way, you cannot add more huts. So the way around it, culturally, we have to do, like you live in a studio, studio house, then you move to a house, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom. Then as you grow old, then you downsize. Mm. So some cultures, as you said, uh, in North America, in Europe, they do a lot of moving. But in Ghana, we, uh, we, like to, uh, we like to be 25 years old and still have our five-bedroom house, which is not practical. So you think our dreams are too wild? They are not realistic? Yes, you have, to, you have to pursue your dream, as I said, like a business, and you start small and you grow. So if what you can afford is a studio, we can go for a studio. Even okay. though studio technically is not a house, but at least it's... Uh, is a place where you can put your head and your self enclosed. And now, you now when you say a studio apartment, you would want to explain what a studio apartment okay. is. Yes, a studio, according to Greta, is not really a house because, as we said, a house is like a one bedroom. Uh, so, a studio is basically it's one hall where you have your bed on one side, you have your living room on one side, and you have a kitchenette all in one common area, and then you have your uh, you, you have your washroom. And we have built a studio uh, flat at Lakeside Estate going for 18, uh, or the city equivalent of 18,000 US dollars. So it is possible to even go less if you, if you change your concept of what is a house. So it's all about what the individuals out there, they are looking for. Yes. But again, uh, many also believe that um, in the past, the cost of houses and even lands they were not as expensive as of today. Yes, we do agree the economy is, uh, you know, becoming uh, a bit wild, and we believe that with time the prices will be uh, going up. But the rate at which, you know, in current times we are 
hearing the prices of buildings is a bit, to say, crazy. And uh, even individuals who are not real estate developers, they are also uh, inclining towards the kind of prices you people, the tag you put on the soles of your building. And we want to blame you people that uh, you, because of the uh, uh, big figures you call for the sale of your houses, that is also motivating the individuals to also start selling uh, their lands at that you know, high. Uh, yes, as, as I said, uh, land in Ghana is actually cheap. It's the cost of infrastructure. Land in uh, Ghana is actually cheap. Uh, anyway, if you look, if you go outside Accra, yeah. uh, you see people selling a plot maybe for 10,000 CD, 20,000 CDs, right? Uh, no, outside Accra, way in the bush. Way in the bush, as, as okay. of, I think... No, inside ago, Accra, you, it's very... Uh, let me make an example of Dodua. Yes. Dodua, and yes. it will surprise you. People are spending as much as 50, 60. 50, 60,000 CDs. Okay, yes. let, let, let's take that. Mm -hmm. 50, 60,000 CDs, let's convert to about dollars. That's about $5,000. And it's cheaper. If, 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 you, if you listen to what I said at the part, it costs between two fifteen. dollars to twenty thousand dollars to build the infrastructure. Okay. Because sorry, the chief is not selling you the land with the infrastructure. You have to build your road. You have to put your concrete gutter. You have to put your sidewalk. You have to put your uh, transformer. You have to put all these things. So the, these things, the real estate developers association, we pay. Usually, the individuals, what they will do, they will buy the the plot for fifty thousand and they build the house and they all wait for 10 to 20 years before government brings the, the infrastructure in. Now, that infrastructure costs money. And uh, I'll challenge you that uh, real estate uh, companies, they build infrastructure even at less expenses as government. That's why it takes government uh, 10 to 20 years to do that. So clearly we agree yes. the government has not been supporting you when it comes to these basic amenities that, you know, needs to be provided within this said uh, areas. So that also explains, you know, the reason why we are seeing that high cost of these buildings you are selling. But, 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 but um, let, let's come to this. Uh, most people believe that. Uh, I spoke to one expatriate, okay, and he mentioned that, look, what we even consider to be an estate here, a well-planned community, he doesn't see that as the case because uh, if we are talking about a first class estate, then we need to have first class roads, we need to have proper drainage structures, we need to have, you know, uh, our electricity cable wires, they are just flying in the sky, it needs to be run beneath. I mean, technically, then he's saying, he, uh, sorry he used the word uh, estate, I wouldn't want to add the other one. Slums, if I'm allowed. Okay. Do you so, agree? Uh, and I, yes, I, so I, the I, I real estate and, and developers, disagree. they are taking, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, let me divide the development, the built environment into two parts. Okay. We have the professionals who are building. Uh, you have government building a little bit. Then you have Greda, Ghana Real Estate, who are building, I think, the majority of the NICE. And then you have the so-called slums. These slums, the way they, they operate is the chief, he will sell the land to you, to me, to everybody is building his own thing. Mm. And sometimes, even sorry to say, they will sell the river and they'll sell the road and they'll sell the school. Uh, th that's why it's a slum, because there's no planning. They don't use, uh, they don't use architects like Richard Abbey, Mr. Buckman. They don't use urban planners. They don't use architects at all. So obviously, that, that's why it's a mess. But if you look at the GRADA members, Ghana Real Estate Development Association, including Lakeside, we, we, we have plans. Like if you come, uh, you see the block plan, site plan, you have places for lower income housing, we have place for middle income housing, we have place for, um, for commercial, uh, a place for industrial, a place for school, a place for parks, and uh, certain places are flood zones. So at Lakeside, I say there's the Lakeside Marina Park, that's a flood zone, so we don't build houses around them. But the, sorry to say, the, uh, the land guards and this, they will sell any land. That's why it's not. And it's time for government and the municipalities to, to especially the, the local municipalities, to rise to the situation that I believe that's a personal view. This is not any view of anybody that uh, you, you should, uh, the chiefs should never be able to sell the land. They need to partner, uh, they need to partner uh, developers 
who will cut the land. And after you cut the land, then you can sell it and they can share in it. Okay, so Kweku, we clearly believe in what you are saying, but uh, we'll be going for a break in about a few. But before we take our break, let me ask this last question. Um, my discussion with a few people, and they are just not for it. And what are they not for? Uh, their query is this, that after buying these real estate homes, they love the idea that they are being provided with security. There is that, you know, sanitation correctness uh, and that kind of comfortability organization. They love it. But then again, the service charges at the end of each month, some believe can actually pay for another apartment elsewhere. Uh, I think that's a good question to ask, but it depends how much you are paying. Are you, uh, are you paying uh, 500 CD, 600 CD, or are you paying 5,000 CDs? I know some of these very expensive high-rise in Accra, they can pay up to 5,000 CDs a month. 5,000 CDs? Uh, yes, but uh, most, most real estate companies is between, uh, I think, about 400 to 800 Ghana CD. And that's, I think, is credible. Because if you have just one security man, his take home is about uh, 700, 800 CDs. Mm. So if you are paying 800 CD and you have shared resource where you have cleaning, where you have uh, road maintenance, you have street lights, I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good It's thing. fair. It's a fair amount. It's a fair amount. Yes. On that note, we go on a break here. The show will be back shortly. Welcome back to the show. My guest today, um, he is the uh, founder, the owner of Silver Star Tower, and again, the owner of Lakeside Estate. So far, it's been exciting, and about now, we are going to talk to him about uh, the Silver Star Tower, which falls under the commercial real estate development. We would want more light to be thrown on it. What are the advantages, you know, venturing into commercial real estate? Quite a number of us, we are just used to, you know, the residential real estate, the selling of homes and, you know, uh, apartments and et cetera. But now we want to focus on commercial real estate and uh, KK is the right person to talk to because he is the owner and executive director of the Silver Star Tower that is standing at Opebia Junction. KK. Thank you, Emmanuel, for Let's the second introduction. <laughs> I'm just trying to make our viewers understand who you are better. Um, commercial real estate, uh, focus on the earlier segment, we spoke more about real estate as in residential. Now we want to focus, about, uh, focus on commercial real estate. What is commercial real estate and what are the advantages as compared to the residential real estate? That's a wonderful uh, uh, question. No, uh, the first part we talk about the residential, this is where we sleep. When you talk about commercial, is this is where we work. So it could be offices, it could be retail shops like malls, uh, and it could be also industries where we have factories. So this is where we, when we talk about uh, commercial real estate, what it is. And it's very important uh, that in Ghana we do develop this because uh, some, some companies they take homes and they turn them into offices, which is not professional and not the right way. Because you need to have residential communities, you need to have co uh, commercial office, commercial retail, and you can have a lot of subcategories. Uh, and the nice thing about uh, Airport City Accra, you know, the uh, ACA stands for two things, either Airport City Accra or Airport City Association. And you are the president. And I'm the president of the Airport City Association, and the enclave there, we have the, uh, we have the right of we're the only people in Ghana to use the airport city, Accra. But we'll talk more about that later on. So uh, that's what uh, commercial, uh, real, uh, commercial real estate. And uh, Greda, some of our members, uh, Greda members, are also into the commercial business as well. The commercial business, business. as well. So would you like to know more about uh, Airport City? Of course, I, I'll be coming to Airport City clearly. Yes. But then I would want us to understand what commercial real estate you know, entails. Uh, is it the same approach with residential real estate? I mean, uh, the Wahala you mentioned before, is it the same experience with commercial real estate? Uh, when we started in the year 2000, uh, when we bought the land through a government tender and everybody at Airport City did that, it was very good and very safe. So those lands that, were for that, government? Yes. Uh, they were government lands? Government land under uh, Ghana Airport Company Limited. 
Oh, okay. It used to be uh, uh, Ghana Civil Aviation, which was broken down into two parts. So now we are under Ghana uh, Airport Company Limited. And I'm happy to say that's the only real estate project I did with there were no land wahala. <laughs> I realize that you are very, you know, yes. uh, with your wahala, yes. with your wahala. Okay, fine. But then um, one would also want to know, so now we've agreed that clearly, uh, typically with commercial real estate, you don't really experience the said wahala, the way you describe it. It's more smoother than the rest It depends on the location. It depends uh, on the location. Uh, obviously, the location which we, we develop, Airport City, was very much secure. Okay. I'm sure if you develop where the... Uh, Two or three competing chiefs, you can you see something else. Oh, okay. But with the investment capital, yes, is it huge yes. as compared uh, to? Obviously, at the scale that Airport City was done, uh, it is huge. It is very, it is very big. Uh, the original players were all uh, Ghanaian. I mean, we had, uh, 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 we had. Maybe they wouldn't have... want you to call their names. Uh, no, no problem. They, these are members just like me. I oh, mean, okay. we had uh, Uno Homes, Victoria De Ducedo. She's a pioneer. Manat, uh, Mrs. Beko, she's a pioneer. We have uh, Ibrahim of Dar es Salaam fame, and then the Kalmuni family of Japan Motors fame. Wow. So we were the pioneers who started in 2016. Uh, 2016, we built, uh, we actually, we built before in uh, 2000, but 2016, we realized that no, we needed to create an association and the association need, need, needs to look at the needs, which I'll describe uh, later on, what are the needs. Okay, now let me, yes. you know I'm always particular about the cost. Yes. Yes. As of now, as of now, um, Airport City has the most expensive, you know, square meter price for, you know, an office. And why is that? Uh, thank you very much for stating the fact. I'm yes, that, that's, that's the truth. No, for me, that's I'm the very truth. happy. You are happy. You are, I'm happy. But you, you are trying me, to. You told me earlier you are you are an expert when it comes to affordability. I salute you. I take it's up. It's a compliment. I take up. <laughs> okay, we are we. Uh, why are we? Because we are the best. We are the premium. And anyway, anytime you go for the best and you go for the premium, you have to ask for the premium price. Okay, so Airport City is uh, is the top class with international standard building in Ghana. Like, uh, talking specifically at Silver Star Tower, some of the amenities, like, and other buildings, they have it. Mm. I don't have one generator. I, I don't have two generators. I have three generators going on. I carry 150,000 liters of underground water reservoir. I have three lifts, not one lift or two lifts. We have a maintenance company called Advanced Construction who are embedded within our team. Uh, we have firefighting contracts. We have Caterpillar contracts. We have cleaning contracts with Dunwell Cleaning Services. So all these things cost a lot. And that's where you pay your 5,000 uh, Ghana CDs so at the premium level. Okay. So <laughs> per, per, per month for your maintenance, uh, for your maintenance cost. Uh, and the advantage of it, you are sitting in the uptown. You know, we have the downtown, which is the old part of the city. Now you are in the uptown. And from where my office is and most offices, you can see the airport. It takes you less than three minutes to be at the airport. So, and this has made, uh, it helps Ghana. Uh, uh, airport City is, uh, is a premium place, not only, for, not only for Ghana, but also for West Africa. We are the center of the world. So this helps us. And we, uh, I think we, uh, we, the individual developers at Airport City, have tied in very well with the government mandate to make uh, Ghana the uh, the center of the world or the gateway to West Africa. Uh, I would say you guys have done well. I mean, these magnificent properties, edifices we see around airport is really shaped, you know, our landscape. And I would say congratulations. But uh, you know me and my troubles. Whenever it's too, the price is expensive, I would want you to always do something about it. Now, tell us more about ACA. That's uh, Accra Airport City you association. Know, association and the span from the ends of it. Yes, as I said, the, uh, the, the land was initially sold by tender in the year 2000. And I think like us, uh, there were three companies who started very early. It was Uno Homes, Silver Star Tower, and uh, I think Manette. Luckily, we were the first, uh, we were the first to finish. So that's why a lot of people associate Airport City with Silver Star Tower. 
but uh, at the beginning, um, the municipality, you know, we were under uh, uh, Accra Municipal Assembly, then later on it was broken down to LADMA, and we realized that, that they were taking our property rates, the taxes for property rate and business operating tax, and they were not really doing what they, they were supposed to do. Mm. So we had to fix our own street lights, we had to do space cleaning, uh, we have to even sometimes move um, uh, people who are begging, loitering. At one point in time, now you don't hear about it, but two, three years ago, there was a crazy man even in the area, and he even used to throw things and attack people, so we got the help. Consistently he yes. was within here. Yeah, so we got the help of uh, the airport police station to, to remove him, uh, to remove him. And uh, as I said, and even people doing illegal parking and things like that. So the association, one of the most important, it has four functions, but one of the most important functions is to, the, to do the area cleaning, which is a mandate of the municipality, which they have do, not done. Number two is to advocate that we want uh, LADMA to do its job. I mean, they do collect uh, our property rate, and they need to spend part of the money with us. They, they don't need to give it all to us. They can give us 25%, 30%, so that we can do these things. Another one is to do what I'm doing today, is to promote uh, uh, Airport City for all our members. It's a premium office space. It's the most expensive, but it's the best. Okay, and then uh, we have all the other things if you would like to know. Okay, so other things if we want to know, and it's the best. These are his last words. Uh, now it's now time for us to pick your views, your thoughts on what have been discussed so far. You can call the numbers on your screen. That's 030 221 And you are welcome to give us your submission on the subject here. Kweku. Hello? Hello. Hello, John. Hello, John. Hello. John, where are you calling from? Hello. Hello, John. Where are you calling from? Hello, John. Good evening. Okay. Sorry, we lost John. So, call back again. Kweku. So, I was coming to this question that has to do with you know the methodologies and the materials we use for the construction. You said you're an expert once it comes to affordability of homes, and I personally believe that. Uh, due to our conventional ways of our construction. That's why we are seeing buildings in Ghana consistently get expensive day in and day out because we can look at the option of bricks. We can look at the option of other materials like plasterboards, which do not cost that much. And literally at the end of the total construction, the full construction, we are going to have you know, a lesser cost. And it's even faster using these materials for construction. So why are we not embracing these methodologies and new products so that we can cut down the cost and okay. make housing affordable? Uh, yes, uh, I think we can build houses more, more, uh, more affordable and with lower cost. Brick is a wonderful material. It's a hollow core. But also concrete blocks or concrete blocks can also, or concrete blocks can also be hollow. But in Ghana, we always want to build with solid blocks. So the houses are solid, hollow blocks. Okay, so let's go on the phone. Uh, Farouk, uh, tell us where you're calling us from. And again, to uh, call us, please, when you call, please mute uh, your television set. Farouk. Hello, Farouk. Yes, I'm listening. I want him to learn. Uh, this is Farouk calling from Wenchi, uh, Bono region. Okay, go ahead, yes. Farouk. Yeah, first of all, I want to uh, congratulate my brother, KTK. Um, he's an uh, admirer. I really like him. I really appreciate his uh, generosity. I know the good thing that he's doing, uh, a lot of work working that he's doing. I know him very, very well. And I pray to God Almighty Allah to bless him and bless his company. And we uh, just want to pray with them to please try. I know the material are very, very costly. So, and when the materials are costly, it will, by all means, uh, create inconveniences with the regard of the price of the house or other So, we should try and at least make it come uh, down a bit so that 
the rich ones will be able to afford it. Okay, thank you very much, Farouk. So it comes down to affordability. And you're on the subject that is, uh, we're using materials that are, you know, less affordable so that at the end of the construction, uh, we can still have our homes very affordable. Yes, As I agree with you. We can use brick, we can use hollow blocks. Even but, with uh, plasterboard. With plasterboard. But the thing is that we also, the most important thing is the area of the house. So if I can design a house with uh, 100 square meters and I can reduce it to 50 square meters, uh, the price goes down. So you so, believe we should also cut uh, down yes, the sizes uh, of the, the building? The size of the building. And uh, I think once we understand that, because in a lot of cultures, uh, like in China, you see a building, thousand people sitting in a building. Thousand people <laughs> sitting in, in there. The so okay, we so we are going all the way to where Adam is on the phone. Adams. Hello. Hello, Adams. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your submission. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I want to say uh, congrats to Mr. Kiki for his wonderful words. But uh, the question I have for him is that uh, what sort of materials are being used? Is it the normal material, the cement and sand or local materials? And uh, what is the duration for the, uh, the real housing? When you buy it, is it a permanent one for you, or is that the time that when uh, the time elapses, they will come back for renegotiation, or you will just be there forever? That is the question I have for you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I will, I will take in two parts. Uh, what we build is using uh, reinforced concrete beams. This is the traditional way of, do, uh, of doing it. And uh, is it local? Well, the sand is local, the cement is local, the iron rod is not local. So when it comes to the infrastructure, uh, yes, a lot of it is the problem usually is with the finishing. And we like very expensive finishing. That's why the price goes down, the price goes up. Now for the uh, second part, uh, usually uh, Lakeside Estate and Greda, we, we get uh, leases. Our lease is about, uh, now we have about 70 years. So after the lease expires, we have to see the allodial owners and renew with them. And then after we renew with them, then we'll renew with you. Uh, there's very few freehold uh, housing in Ghana, but I think that's another expert subject for another lawyer to talk about. Okay, so there are some few questions on the social media page. Uh, the production team says, I should read them. So the first one, that's, uh, Felix Kafri Dagadu, and he says, if Mr. Keke can explain further on why he's saying land is cheap, as far as I'm concerned, land isn't cheap. I understand that infrastructure is way expensive. However, I don't agree that land is cheap. So that is what uh, Felix uh, Kafri is saying. He says he doesn't agree with you that with what you're saying, uh, land is cheap. I, I, as I said, it's uh, relative where, where you are. Everything is relative uh, in life. Uh, if you know, if you want to buy a plot of land, an acre at Airport City, they tell you $3 million, $4 million. <laughs> this is one, one acre of land. KK. Okay. So 50000 I don't know. For okay. 50000 not so expensive. <laughs> okay, so you still can call into the show. The numbers on your screen, 030 221 KK KK is in the studio, and he will answer all your questions. Okay, so uh, with what you said, clearly, it's relative. Yes. It's, it's relative. relative. Yeah. It's relative. But, you know, um, with what uh, the brother from Wa said, Adams, and he believes that if we can pay attention to the kind of materials we use, though you are saying uh, typically it's more about the size of the building, but I also strongly believe that based on the kind of materials we use, we can also cut down the cost of construction drastically. Elsewhere in the UK, also in the Americas, you find most of their homes with the partition walls, they don't use these uh, solid blocks we use here. They use, you know, the plasterboard. And I believe it saves money. We, we have so much uh, dead weight on buildings here. When I say dead weight, these are, this is the natural weight of the building because we have so many beams, we have so many columns with a lot of blocks sitting on the building for nothing. Meanwhile, we could have substituted it with, you know, uh, timber plasterboard. Do you think uh, the culture wouldn't embrace it because they are just no blocks? That could be why maybe investors are not also looking in that uh, direction. First of all, plaster boards are expensive in Ghana because they are not made in Ghana. Yes, but we the are. But block, block walls, hollow block walls, I think 
they are less expensive than, uh, than plasterboard. Because when you do plasterboard, you have to put a metal, uh, there's a metal sod in the middle, you put one on the right, one on the left, then you have to mud it, then you finish it. Yes, I agree. So, so, so it's a bit complicated. But even with the insulating and, and material. usually that one is done for expensive building like Silverstar Tower. Okay, so let me come in. That's done for homes. Let me come in. You, you know, uh, some few quantities of air friends I have. Yes. And this same subject we are arguing here, uh, using plasterboard, probably bricks, uh -huh, against the blocks we normally use. Uh, we realized that these plasterboards were cheaper because you see, probably the composition of a plasterboard drywall might be expensive as compared to the blocks. With the blocks, when you are done, you have to plaster, you have to do skimming, in other words, Andre, then finally your painting. But with this plasterboard, you get to escape most of these you know, uh, processes. So that eventually, I'm not saying we should be looking at plasterboard, but I've come across or seen a lot of products that some engineers or you know inventors have brought onto the market and yes though we are not embracing it the culture is not embracing it though they are going to yes. make our buildings uh, cheaper yes again let me announce that uh, we are still taking in the phone lines you can call the number on your screen that is 030 uh, yes, the plasterboard are cheaper for Europe, Canada, US. They are not cheaper for Ghana for two reasons. Okay. The metal studs are produced locally and the drywall are produced lo locally and the mud is produced locally. In Ghana, all these things are uh, imported items. So let's so say until, bricks. Uh, until they are produced in Ghana, then the price will go down. Now, bricks is very interesting material and I, uh, I like it mm -hmm. because bricks, if you do it on the outside, or sometimes on the inside, depending on how you finish, if especially you don't chisel it, then you, you can just paint it and the color comes out. So I've seen some wonderful uh, places where, where you can introduce brick mm -hmm. and you can introduce more things like uh, the doors, the door frames are made in Ghana, the doors are made in Ghana. Now there's even uh, a factory which does tiles in Ghana. Terrazzo, in the old days, I used to do terrazzo, but nobody wants terrazzo, everybody wants the import. So there's also sometimes a culture what the customer wants. Mm. For me, I think terrazzo is very beautiful, especially when you finish it very well. Uh, some people, they do it in a nyama nyama way, that's why maybe we don't like okay, it. Okay, what did you but say? Nyama nyama way. Nyama nyama way. You know, there's always the nice way, uh, the pe, pe, pe way, and there's the nyama nyama way. You know? Okay, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, using more local material, it always helps. But the, the critical thing for affordability is being, I think, in flats and having smaller sizes. And as people grow, you can grow your homes. Okay, okay, okay. So your final words before we wrap up with the show, what would you want to tell our viewers and what should be our anticipation from Lakeside Archive Positive Association? Yes. Uh, I will say it's good to buy homes from professional developers uh, because professional developers, they look at everything and they give you, uh, they give you good infrastructure. Please buy from uh, Greda Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. And uh, real estate is not only about the residential homes like Lakeside Estate, which is doing a wonderful job. Maybe one day you, you get the MD, Dr. Ayiko. And then, uh, but it also involves commercial and industrial. So I'm happy and congratulations on your pyramid. And I hope more, more people will come and I'll recommend some of them for you as well. Yes, yes. We, we are here for the built industry. We hope to you know, enlighten the professionals and even uh, most Ghanaians on the practices to get, you know, the standard, you know, construction of homes done for them. Because the challenges we see most of the times, people calling you to their homes and the defects is just, is just bad because they were willing, they want something nice done, but it's just that uh, they didn't get into, they didn't get to meet the right people like yourself and the many real estate developers or probably even, you know, proper engineers out there. So this is why we have the show here. But, but you've been talking about Greater. I know the name as Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. And um, you just mentioned if people are to be buying real estate homes, they should make sure that they are registered Greater members. So once the real estate developer is a Greater member, what are some of the you know, advantages that the one buying, the buyer, has? 
Uh, well, I think they could be, uh, the three top advantages is number one, you don't have land wahala anymore. Number two, you get your house instantly mm. or within a year usually. But when you build your house, it might take you 10, 20 years to finish. And the third advantage is you know they are using professional built environment. Uh, people, uh, you have architects involved, you have engineers involved, you have uh, hydrodynamics, uh, gutters, and electrical engineers all involved. So because of these top three things, I encourage uh, people, uh, any person who wants to buy a house, they should consider greater members. And greater members, we have people who are selling houses from 25,000 US dollars all the way to over a million dollars. All the way to over a million dollars. Okay, we agree. But if one is to purchase a home from a greater member, and though you are giving us the assurance that uh, there's the high tenancy, you are not going to have any defect correction or problems on the building, if in the instance where we see anything like that, what is the approach? How do we uh, tackle that matter? That's a very good question. Uh, I didn't promise you there'll be no defect. If there's a defect and they are a reputable company, they will, uh, they will, uh, they will clean it and fix it for you. And Grader has an internal disciplinary committee which will look at people who do complain. So if you buy a Grader house, and that, and that developer, we want you to encourage, see the developer and you complain to him. And uh, after three times you believe you are not, you can always approach uh, Grader. And I hope you, uh, you invite either the Grader president or the Grader executive uh, secretary, Mr. Sami Amagaivo, who's Amagai. a very famous uh, talker. He's he, actually he can, my mate from school. Oh, fantastic. So he's the guy who can even talk better than me okay. on these specific issues. So, uh, in the attempt to buy a greater member's house, you know, what are some of the evidence I'm supposed to see? What are some of the credentials um, I have to, he has to give to me to know that, yes, indeed, this real estate developer is a member of greater. What should uh, I look Yes, at? Uh, well, first of all, they always have a certificate. Uh, number two, if you go to the greater website, it lists all the current, uh, uh, current and active members. Okay, so those are the two ways of knowing. So you can see this in the office or you can go to the website. Okay, so at this moment, we are wrapping up with the show. A very big thank you to Mr. Salama Kweku Kamoni, who wants to be called KK. And also a very big thank you to the production team here in the studio. A very big thank you to Mesha Keduo Kain all the way in Texas, Arlington. We shall be coming your way same time next week on your favorite channel. Join us. Stay blessed.